Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of It's Not All Rainbows. I'm your host, Lindsay Goodman. I'm a certified trauma recovery coach, and I'm also a survivor of abuse in a queer relationship. I'm here to help you figure out what's really going on in your relationship, help get you out, and hopefully on the road to healing. Today, I'm going to talk to you about my son's in the other room. Today, I'm going to talk to you about forgiving your abuser. Is this something that we have to do? Is this something that we will not be able to heal without doing, or is that a load of crap? Before we dive in, I'm going to do uh, my struggles and successes. My struggle for today is that I'm very far away from my family, um, which I always am, but I'm even more far away right now. And my family back home is really just having a lot of hard times. There have been a lot of things that, um, that have happened that are putting me in like super mega worry mode and like, do I need to go home now? What's going on? I really want to be there for my family and I'm not loving being far away from them and I feel really hopeless. And I just want to put that out there because I'm sure there are a lot of people who are in the same boat. You've moved away or you're traveling or whatever happens and um, it can really suck. It can really suck to be away from your family. And today has been especially hard. You might be able to hear it in my voice. I'm a little bit sniffly because I've been allowing myself to just feel those feels, um, which is very important to do. I do still struggle with crying. So, um, you know, crying is very good for our bodies. That's what it's there for. <sighs> my success is that um, today I had a little testament to my healing. I had someone leave me many comments on one of my videos about, um, you know, celebrating how long I've been free from my abuser. And they said something like, you just need to let it go. You need to stop talking about this. You keep talking about the same things. The right way to heal is by not talking about it, blah, blah, blah. And I do get comments like that from time to time. And the old me would have been like, oh, I need to explain myself. I need to explain why I'm doing this. And, you know, why I'm not doing that, all of those things, because as survivors or anybody, we just want to be heard. We want to be seen. We want to be understood. And we have spent a lot of our lives over explaining, desperately trying to be understood um, and being frustrated because that doesn't happen with certain people. And so the testament to the growth is that I realized that this was not my, not something wrong with me. This is not something that I need to do. I don't need to force someone to try to understand me. This is something that they're probably struggling with. There's a reason why they got triggered by that video and that's okay. I hope that they can figure out what that is um, so they can feel better. Um, but yeah, that is obviously a big a big change from where I was a couple of years ago um, when I was in a much more defensive place. So, all right, let's dive in. Let's talk about forgiveness. Um, I had someone the other day tell me that, you know, I was talking about therapy on Twitter. I am not anti-therapy, um, but I am very anti not trauma informed therapy. And I can be pretty loud about that. I was tweeting a lot. I was feverishly tweeting away about therapy and how therapists need to be up to date on, you know, coercive control and all that stuff. Everybody needs to be up to date on it, not just therapists, first responders, everybody, everybody, teachers, everyone should know you, you need to know everyone. <laughs> Um, and someone said to me that their therapist said something like, you need to forgive your abuser. And here's the thing. What society believes, like when we think of forgiveness, we think of either one, you know, telling someone that we forgive them. You get in a fight with your partner uh, because, you know, they do something to harm you and you feel like you have to come near and say, you know what, I forgive you. I understand, you know, we're all human. You didn't know that that was going to hurt me, um, whatever, right? We see that a lot, like forced down our throats. We see it like in movies, we see it in books, we see it. it's like this big moment of, oh, I forgive you. It's been really hard. I've been struggling. I've been journaling and drinking by myself at night or whatever. I don't know. Okay. But now I'm going to forgive you because I don't want to be in this place and our relationship is saved. Oh, perfect. Or the other option is that like they're your abuser or maybe someone has passed away and you're like, I can't forgive you because you're not here anymore. Or I don't want you to be here anymore. So I'm just going to have this like little meditation moment. And I'm just going to be like, okay, forgive you like out into the wind and I'm like on a hillside in the Alps or something. And I'm like, Oh my goodness, I feel so much better. I have no more trauma. I'm perfect now. Like that's what we think of when we think of forgiveness. Cause again, that's the message we've been sold. That's crap. We do not have to do that. And some people will argue again, some people argue that you do. Um, some people will argue that it's not that, 
um, you have to forgive yourself to do it, or you have to like, whatever it's this or that. Okay. Here's the thing. We're all different. We're all on different healing journeys. I do not believe that you have to forgive. Um, I never forgave my abuser. I never was like, I forgive you. What happened was that I learned to understand my own trauma and work on healing my own trauma and understanding how I got in that situation through no fault of my own. Cause we do not victim shame here. Um, all of the shame and blame is on the abuser, the person who's choosing to do these things over and over to multiple people. Right. But I also learned to understand their behavior, why they do it, what it looks like, all of that. That's why I still talk about it because I really hope that other people will also learn and understand and things like that. And for me, the equivalent of forgiveness, like there was never a moment that I was like, okay, I forgive you was having all this information and knowledge and really soaking it up and accepting the reality of it. Like, um, and you don't have to do this either. If you don't want to, you are not required to forgive. You are not required to do any of the things that I just said. Although I do believe it will help you to be able to understand, like you're listening to this podcast now, hopefully you like, if you like this podcast, you've listened to other things and you've learned a lot from me. That's really why I'm still out here talking because I really hope that for you, if you need it, um, you're not required to do any of that. But I feel like the more that we learn and understand, again, it doesn't justify their behavior to say, oh my goodness, you were neglected as a child. You were never formed a healthy relationship with anyone. You're protecting yourself by doing all of these horrible, abusive things to people again, over and over and over again. Okay, that's okay. It's not that. It's going, oh my goodness. Okay, well, there's a reason why they are this way. I don't need to have anything to do with them. They can stay far away from me. I will never, ever speak to them again. I will never see them again unless, goodness forbid, I run into them, which did happen once. And again, they had no power over me because I've done all the work. It was just like, okay. And they left. Um, so I ran into them at a coffee shop just to clarify. I didn't want you guys to think that like they showed up at my house or something like that. And so there was this natural relief that happened over the time of my healing. If you're new here, um, in August, I will have been broken up with him for two years. And in October, I will be no contact for two years. Um, so that's how far along I am in my healing. Do not compare yourself to me because all of our healing journeys are different. It can take you way longer. It could take, you could feel much better than I do right now earlier on because we're all in different situations. It all depends on our nervous system. It all depends on the supports we have. Um, it all depends. It all depends. We're all different people. Um, but there was a natural release. There was a natural, you know, I'm not feeling this anymore because this is happening. And it's just like, I don't know, I'm picturing something just like releasing into the wind and blowing away. It's obviously not that it's not this like beautiful aha moment. It's just over time, like crumbling. I don't know, like a I don't know. I'm trying to think of like a Disney movie or something where it's like, Oh, it's crumble. Oh, it's gone. Another thing that helps, obviously, like I, I've talked about this before is, you know, learning to love yourself, um, respect yourself, taking time for yourself, really taking time to heal without other people, um, trying to control your healing for you, telling you how you should or shouldn't heal. Like the therapist who's telling you that you have to forgive feeling in your own gut, your own intuition, learning to trust your own intuition and letting those things happen in your own way. That's one of the things that we do in, in trauma recovery coaching is like, we're going to follow you on your path instead of being like, well, this is what I did. You have to do this. I might have suggestions for you. My kid is very happy. He's watching something right now. Um, I don't know if you can hear his little happy laughing. Um, but we're all going to heal in our own way. Obviously I want to try to direct you to like healthy healing and less of like unhealthy, harmful coping mechanisms. And I don't want you to be talking to your abuser anymore because that's probably not going to help you at all. And I'm going to suggest those things to you because I want what's best for you, but you're going to heal in your own way. Um, oh no, there was something else I was going to say that helped with the healing. Obviously being no contact, being away from them, um, helps a lot with that process. Oh no, I don't like when I forget things. I really should have written that down. <laughs> oh no. Um, cause I don't like to waste y'all's time. I guess maybe if I just keep talking, it'll come back. I, I was about to say it. And then I swerved a little bit about like some of the things that I've done, um, to help with the forgiveness. But you know, at the end of the day, I just want you to all understand that nobody should be telling you how you have to heal. Nobody should be telling you that there's like this little key that if you put it in there and twist, it's going to unlock all your problems. They're all going to be like released 
and you're just going to be fine because again, that's not the truth. That's not how healing works. That's not how trauma works. So really, um, whatever that looks like for you, if you do want to forgive, if you feel like, so for example, if I say, do you want to forgive? Do you want to forgive them? And you're like, I really do. I really feel like I need to do this. I need to release this, whatever. And you want to have your little ceremony of like forgiving them and be like, okay, yes. Um, then do it. I remember what I was going to say, feel your feelings, feel your feelings. Feel the hurt, feel the anger. Like when you're on your healing process, before you get to the point of that release, like the crumbling building, just like disappearing into the air and flying away, never to be seen again. Feel rage, feel hatred, feel disgust, feel injustice, feel sadness, pain, sorrow, grief, everything that you have struggled to feel for so long because it's been taken away from you. You have been told not to be dramatic, not to cry, not to this, not to that. Feel all of those feel feelings. Let it happen. Allow yourself the space to do that. If you can't just, you're not alone. You can't just like put on a sad movie and cry because you have kids. Go take a bath, put them, put a movie on them for them or something. They'll be fine. Go take a bath and just freaking cry, silent scream, do whatever and do it over and over and over again until you don't feel like you need to do those things. Release it because when we hold it in, it stays in our bodies. That is all what I was going to say when I was like, Oh no, what was I going to say? So if you're still listening, thank you. Feel your feelings to heal them. And I know that that can sound really cliche. You got to feel it to heal it. But that's the truth, and that is a huge part of my healing was that I literally just allowed myself to stop controlling my process. I do still have trouble crying. I will be very honest with you. Very few things make me cry. Sometimes I'm like, I really want to cry because I've been getting really frustrated with life. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling that. You know, whatever. I wish I could cry. It's so frustrating. I really do struggle with crying. But when I do start crying, I feel myself say, just let it happen. Do not try to distract yourself. Do not do this. Do not do that. Your kid can see you cry. Obviously, I don't want him to see me like break down scream crying or something like that because he's going to get scared. And like when you're like that, it's harder to explain to someone like this is normal. But I do let him see me cry. He'll ask me what's wrong. And I say, mommy's just feeling sad right now. Sometimes mommies get sad too. Sometimes, you know, it's okay to cry, things like that. Show your children that this is what healing can look like. Um, but absolutely, between all the things that I talked about in terms of like, learning to understand abuse, coercive control, what it looks like, why understanding that so you can let go of the confusion and the pain and just being in this fog of like, what was that can be very helpful to your healing. Again, it does not excuse their behavior just because like, oh, well, they have this personality disorder or oh, whatever. Absolutely not. Um, but that helps a lot. And then feeling it, feel it. And I promise you at some point, I don't know when we are not all the same. There will be a natural release of that heavy, yucky burden of anger and resentment and grief and sorrow. It's still going to be there. You're, we are all still going to have moments where we grieve the time that we lost or we grieve for that sad person who was tolerating so much. and like, oh, baby, why? Why were you there? I understand. I have so much grace and compassion for you. And now look at where I'm at, right? Um, we're still going to have those moments that are yucky, but the hope is that it's more contained and it's, we're, you know, we're so much more removed from where we were. So it's a much more, like I said, grace, um, compassion type thing versus being stuck in it still. I hope that that's helpful. I know that that was a lot. And again, I'm talking some about my own experience and I'm talking some about, you know, what we hear society tell us we have to do. Um, another thing that really makes me mad is when people tell us, like I said, in my, um, that's when people try to tell us how we have to heal and that talking about it is bad for us and that we need to move on. And at some point you shouldn't be talking about it anymore. That's all crap. If you want to talk about it 10 years later and you feel like you're, um, just so you know, I don't believe in being healed. I think that we are always going to be healing from so many things from before we were even born. Um, you know, pain and trauma and suffering is passed down through us. I fully believe that. Um, 
But if you want to be, you know, I promise you there will become a time that I talk about this less, but I will still be an advocate for abuse survivors and for change and for understanding of course of control. So even if I'm out here not making this podcast and not sharing about it on my social media, if I see something that I feel like is important for other people to see, I'm going to share it because our voices matter. And just because I do that, maybe I'm 80 years old and it's been 50, I don't know, 60 years since I was in an abusive relationship, me talking about it when I'm 80 doesn't mean that there's something wrong with me or that I'm stuck in my trauma and that I haven't healed. Talk about it if you want to. Talk about it if you need to. Talk about it. You never know who else is going to see that. And you don't have to talk about it either if you don't want to, right? You are able to do whatever you want to do in your healing. But if I see something that can help someone else, I'm going to talk about it. So keep that in mind when it comes to your healing. And you do you. Do whatever you want to do. And if you need support in that, I'm here. I'm everywhere. I have way too much social media. Um, and I struggle to be present on all of it. So really, I probably should just pick one or two. But I'm just seeing what I like. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, I'm talking really quickly because, again, I am really struggling emotionally today. And so I hope that it was all digestible and not just like a big mess. But I hope this was helpful to all of you. Um, if you're in that process and someone is telling you to forgive, I hope that you could pick and choose a couple of the things that I talked about. And I hope that you do start to see progress towards that release, whatever that looks like for you. But again, know that you are not required to sit down and write a letter to burn. that's like, okay, I forgive you or whatever. None of that is required. Okay. Please go and take care of yourselves. Do something nice for yourselves. Um, if you, if you like this podcast, wherever you're listening to it, please rate, review, subscribe. I really want to get this into the ears of the people who need this the most. And all of your interaction really does make that happen. Um, and I really appreciate all of you being here. Um, I've been doing this for a while and we are still a little tiny podcast. And so I do appreciate all the love. And every time someone tells me that they listen to an episode, I feel like so honored that you took the time to listen. So Anyway, go drink some water. I do not have any. I'm in an Airbnb and I'm out of water. I just have this orange juice. So I'll be having orange juice, but please go drink some water and I'll see you all next week with more.